since that's the second thing. Uh, so just wanted to uh, talk about uh, the happy hour. Anybody's thoughts on how it went? What, you know, uh, good or the bad about it? Personally, I it was great for me because I got to meet a lot of people and to meet you all lot, you know, some of you live. Um, and I thought it was interesting. I actually thought Sean did a great job of talking through the, the survey results. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to create a dialogue with the business owners there. So I thought it was great. Yeah. I think it was, it was great to see people in person. You know, Robert, yep. you talked about being back in the office and Sean and I were chatting afterwards and even amongst this group, you know, we've been remote since I hopped on and to actually get a chance to meet people face to face for the first time was. Oh uh, yeah. Great. I agree. It was a huge plus just it as it was today sense. going back to work and to actually interacting right. with people. Yeah. Right. It makes a big difference, but I was also really impressed with the, um, the diversity of the turnout, um, yeah. from, from a lot of different industries, you know, everyone from, Masaro to insurance agencies to, you know, it was give you a sense of the community and how diverse the, the industries are. Yes. Not hey, just you know, to throwing one more thing in, I realized as I was there and we were hearing uh, feedback from business owners <clears throat> that, you know, there, we almost have two, we're serving two different uh, audiences or two different purposes with the EDC. One is supporting the business owners who are there and what they want may be not exactly the same thing as also what's best for the business district on a macro level. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're, um, some of the things that we may wanna do are more about the, the district as a whole rather than serving an individual business. Mm -hmm. you know, that occurred to me that, you know, I think that uh, all the comments I heard from them were very focused on what can we do for my business to make my business uh, thrive. Mm -hmm. Just a thought, you know, not not nothing good or bad about it. It just occurred to me. That I think most of them, though, in my my conversations, most of them felt that there was like a rising tide effect, right? That the, there's more business and more activity. More the better. Yes. For their business, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I absolutely yeah. heard that. So any any other thoughts about the happy hour? Well, I so this is different from what we've done for happy hours in the past. So in the past, um, there's been very little programmatic aspect to it. It's been you know maybe the first selectman or the chair says a few words, but there isn't really a dialogue. There isn't that aspect of asking for feedback. Um, it's more quick and informative mm -hmm. and so i thought doing the tour was really interesting because i felt like that sort of laid the groundwork of this kind of kind of you know conversational like large group conversation mm -hmm. and then i thought having you speak and sean speak um i just felt like it created a different vibe and sort of set the tone for maybe the one on one conversations that followed. Mm -hmm. I really liked it compared to what we've done in the past. I think it's a good model going forward. Oh, that's great. I, I mean, since I have nothing, I don't have a yardstick like you <laughs> of other things. I thought it went really well. I agree. And it was a, a great uh, format. And I liked what you did at the end also, which was more soliciting of feedback, you know, so it was great to pull to, to, to pull in the, you know, responses out. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear what Jeremy thinks because he's been to a few of the ones that we've done in the past, and obviously he was there on Tuesday as well. So I'd be interested to hear his. We'll kind of visit that when take. he gets here, mm -hmm. sure, for sure. Um, uh, can I skip ahead to in-person meetings? Question, just to see how people feel about them. Hey, well, actually, Jeremy just joined us. Oh, as, just joined, right oh, now. Then let's let's wait. <laughs> Hey, Jeremy, you're still on mute. And now we have one more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, good evening. Jeremy, we were just all talking about the happy hour. Do you have any feedback, uh, your perspective on it? Uh, did you think it went well? You know, any 
Any thoughts? Thought it went well. Um, one of the thoughts that we were talking about at the happy hour when we all sort of broke up apart um, was that maybe it may be a good idea to use some of the folks that were at the, I didn't hear what you guys said before, so if I'm repeating myself, I, sorry, but um, is that maybe we use some of the businesses and the folks that were at the meeting as the focus group um, for us to gather together so we can bounce ideas off of them. If they're coming out for happy hours and they're there to be a part of whatever we're doing for the businesses in the, in the town, um, maybe a, a good idea to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, we want to have a focus group. Um, we're going to talk about X, Y, and Z. We're going to talk about the, you know, the, the business association or what we want to do in town. And we'd like your input and we'd like to like sort of narrow it down, take minutes on it and gather your thoughts and comments. So, I don't know, it seemed like there were a lot of people that had a lot of thoughts at the meeting. So, I don't know, sort of what I thought. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> Great. Uh, anything else on the, that, or should we go to uh, next item? Well, we can go back and do the minutes first, probably, right? Let's get that done. So, um, what do we just, uh, uh, move so you to would accept? ask, yeah, you would, you could make the motion or you could ask someone to make a motion to accept the minutes. I make the motion to accept the minutes as published. I'll second. second. Great. All in favor. Yay. Right. I, Great. So I, the minutes are done. Wonderful. Great. Okay, um, so next on the list, it, well, you know, the, the kind of, to me, the goal thing is the biggest thing. So can we, do, is it okay to put that after the in-person meeting discussion? Does it matter? As long as you have consensus, that's okay. Cleo, does that sound right to you? Well, you really should follow the agenda if you oh, want to change the order of agenda. Theoretically, okay. you're supposed to make a motion will, to change, but. I will do it. Or maybe, no, no, the chair, maybe the chairman can, but I don't know. I, I don't want to mess with it. So I'll, let's, I'll like you're supposed to follow the agenda. Let's talk about goals. Um, did uh, anybody get a chance to look at um, like that summary document, uh, which outlined all the goals in both the Yale plan and the town plan? Yes. Okay, I great. <laughs> <laughs> What I, um, did, I, what I did not get a chance to do is look back on old minutes because I know the previous commission, maybe, I don't know how long, Jeremy, you've been on it, but I know the previous commission spent a lot of time discussing the Yale plan, so. Oh, I I think we're, we're, we're not hearing you. Not hearing me? No, yeah. now, now you sound as good. Okay. It was honestly before me that the um, Yale Urban Development Plan was uh, before I was on the commission, it was more Jody and, and Jamie and, and those folks. And I came on sort of as that had come out and, and they were talking about it. Um, it. It would be good to discuss it. There's a lot of things that I think that are probably doable. Yeah. But a lot of the things that, you know, we've talked about over the years that are long term plans that can't be done immediately, but to take the sort of so, some of the directive from it and try to push us towards that is probably a good idea. Okay. Would it make sense to actually um, kind of walk through the recommendations of the plans and just sort of quickly say, hey, is this something we'd be interested in even keeping on our list or not? Is that would that be a sensible way to to look at the what's on there? Well, I did notice in the POCD, I always forget the acronym. The um, yeah, yeah. 
it was recommended that we establish a planning subcommittee to work with planning and zoning commission and to revisit and update its recommendations periodically with a comprehensive review and revision no later than five years from the adoption of this plan <laughs> which would, yes. have, would have been um what was five it? years ago yeah 12 plus five right right yeah so we should be doing something that's for sure <laughs> well sure and you know i know that the all the recommendations in here some of them are elephants you know they're yeah. they're huge things that you know we may well not have the ability money you know to to do but i thought we could possibly at least um pull some things out <laughs> and even if we can't complete them we could move move it forward yeah you know yeah so uh, you're talking about going through the the POCD um uh, yeah we could we could do either one for, i mean i would probably run through them both um if it's not going to take too much just to I'm re, I, what i really want to do is get your all your opinions on is this something that we even are interested in doing so um if you're looking at if you, you have my that summary thing i did i think i'm on page if we want to look at the town plan first that's page 12 which starts with the the uh ongoing with ongoing actions page 12 of my you know pdf yeah what are some of the words on that page <laughs> uh the top uh it's it says action plan for the town plan of conservation and development <laughs> the first bullet is ongoing actions and then i think on page 13 it's actually shows the first ongoing action which starts yeah, so at the top of page 13 says build on the success of a high value added commercial base. Right, right. So, I mean, that's a very vague thing. Continue to promote new businesses. Fine, I'm not, I'm not nothing jumps out at me as like an action item for us there. Uh, be alert to tax benefits. Again, I don't know what that action, what that would mean as an action item for us. Uh, we do, we are certainly, you guys have been maintaining regular contract with the business community, right? So you're doing that with your, with the um, actions that you're, you're, we've already, you've already been taking. Uh, Robert, we're looking at the town plan of conservation and development document. We're, well, I'm looking at my uh, summary doc that I did of both documents. Okay. That was in the uh, it was in the meeting package for tonight. So you might not have doubt, you know, I have oh, well, it. I already have a copy, so I <laughs> um are you are you with us there on Scott or do you not know where I'm I, I don't see the oh okay, the link to the material. I'm sorry, I just downloaded the two that were um, sure. Sure. I, I just figured it would be easier because I tried to distill the got it the goals you know or the action items to to, to make hopefully make it easier to look at okay perfect i can pull it up on my screen if it's it's easier or does everybody have it yeah or if you want me to share my screen i'm happy to do that too whoever's easier would that be would that be preferable so we're all looking at the same page yeah maybe you should do that yeah let's do it let me share my screen here. Oh, okay, great. Super. There's everyone seeing that? Beautiful. Yep. yep. Okay. Am I on the right page? There we go. Right? Is this what you're talking about, Robert? It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. So, and I was saying that the first bullets are kind of very general. They're not, act I didn't see them coming out with an action item to do, you know, a meet, like where we would say, hey, let's grab that and do something. But please speak up if you think, no, there's something we could be doing with these, these first um, items. So, uh, it's not clear to me, like you said, what the alert to tax benefits means, yeah. but maybe yeah. it's a 
kind of vague way of talking about tax abatements? Well, I wondered that, and I um, and Sean, I was very interested when Sean said that you guys have already done a whole presentation on tax abatements. And Sean encouraged, because he couldn't be here tonight, but he said, bring that into our goals. So I would certainly want to do that. I want to see what you put together from, from the past too. Oh, we already presented it to the Board of Selectmen, so. And what happened? Um, I think it got deferred to Woodbridge 2030 committee. Oh, so the notion of doing something with tax abatements for new businesses is in their hands. Yeah, but I think this might be talking about, um, there's a state program, I don't know what it's called, but I know like um, biotech companies, I'd have to look up what it's called. I know at least biotech companies get um, special tax exemptions for all their equipment. Um, so maybe that's what it's talking about. Oh, okay. uh, high value okay. instruments. Okay. Um, okay. I can find out and confirm that. So when we, we were talking about tax abatements, like what specific taxes? Well, yeah, we, I wondered that too. Some we have sort of developed a proposal for and that and it, it was a bit of a quandary because um, Toby and I worked on it and it was a proposal for um, property tax abatement. So, okay. Then, okay. you know, the issue becomes a, a bunch of these businesses don't actually own the property. So, it, right. It, so you'd be right. You'd require the landlord to pass those through somehow. Right. If they could. Yeah. For the property. Do don't most landlords actually just charge you tax like charge the tax to you anyway? I mean, so it depends. It depends on the lease. I mean, if it's a triple net lease, then yeah, the tenants pay a portion of the taxes as part of their right common right. common you know area common maintenance charges. But um, I think the idea was to incentivize commercial property owners to. Um, develop their storefronts or their signage or their parking lots or whatever it may be. And if they, you know, the abatement would be if you, if you put X, Y, Z amount of money into your property to build it up or make it look better, or, um, you would get some sort of a tax abatement over the years based on how much money you put into your property. So I see. You know, you, that makes a know, lot of sense. Yeah. And not, not the point. Not pointing fingers at anybody, but if you drive down Amity Road and you see all these, you know, sandwich signs on the road, you know, it would nice it would be nice to not see all those A frame sandwich signs up on the curbs of the of the storefronts. And it would be nice to see nice signage and you know new facades or maybe a second story or whatever it may be on a lot of those buildings where if they made those improvements to their property, there would be an abatement program, whether, you know, how long that abatement would be, if it was phased in over five years or whatever it may be, um, they would get some sort of incentive for putting money into their property, which would benefit our, you know, the, the downtown or the business district. Yeah. But it would, so it would benefit it, right? So I, you know, with, I, I have nine <laughs> locations in nine towns, right? And the story is the same in every one of them it's uh it, it's the real estate taxes right that are passed down from the landlord right and jeremy to your point in with cam and everything else right and then the other piece is the personal property tax right that also comes from the town so those are the those are the two right so when we look at okay we have vacancies and we want to fill them well the taxes are basically being paid anyway right, whether they're occupied or not. So when we think about growing tax base, filling vacancies, I'm trying to see how that. Yeah, the abatement would really be for people, like Jeremy said, who are making major investments in the building. So it's not about filling an empty spot. It's about maybe adding a second story or doing a major renovation or building on an empty parcel. Okay. Okay. That so it is sense. specifically about adding to the grand list 
and it, it was tiered. It's been a while since I looked at it, but um, the way it was written was was basically if you invest X, you'll get Y abatement for however many years. Was that was that ever expected or is that, you know, in force or not? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, what? I just asked if it was, uh, was that ever put in force? So now if I was a business owner, I have access to that now, or is that not? No, it was not adapted. Okay. okay. And, and, and when you talk about leases for, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, retail properties, you know, and that's where your triple net leases come into play. So as a, as a, as a retailer wanting to lease space in a building, if the landlord or the tenant either way is going to put money into the facade or to build out the space or to make the building better in whatever which way they want to make it better, the taxes would be abated. So if it's a triple net lease, that's where the tenant is paying, you know, a portion of the percentage of the occupancy of the space, you know, of, of, of the building, they would pay less in taxes because there's an abatement on the property. So we're going to put hundred thousand dollars into this property and you're going to get an abatement on it well you're going to you're going to be you're going to save a certain amount of money per year for well, that you would save on the increase of the assessment right so the idea is you're you're okay if you're right. replacing the roof that's not going to add to the value of your building so you would get sorry. an abatement for something like that right. but your other example about adding a second story certainly would increase the value of the building and you'd get an abatement on the an increased value mm -hmm. so if you brought a new tenant in let's let's say like one of the anchor tenants like we've talked about right and so someone comes in and that requires a major renovation to an existing space right that would affect the assessment if it if it adds to the yes if it adds to the assessment yes i got it okay all right so it's and the same thing there was also part of the proposal talked about major investments in personal property so mm -hmm. one example that always sticks in my mind is um the golf course the owner was telling me a few years ago that um she really wanted to buy all new golf carts it's um a big deal now to have GPS in your golf carts, um, but that is a major investment. I don't know how many carts she has, but imagine buying 100 new carts or whatever the number is. That's a major investment, um, but it would be really good for her business. So if she had um, an abatement, that could incentivize her to make that investment earlier rather than later. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, does the golf course adding GPS to their golf carts increase the value of the property or in the, value of the of personal the property, right? Because those go each of those golf carts, A, they'd be new and, and B, they'd be probably worth more than a non GPS golf course. Well, we, or we, we figured that, you know, of the available spaces, you know, to, for a prop, uh, business owner to add $500,000 of personal property it would have to be a fairly significant operation. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's not buying a new desk. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's putting in major equipment. Yeah. And a, a good example is Litchfield Turnpike. You know, you've got the empty the empty lots that we all know about along Litchfield. If someone went in there to develop that those properties and they took it from let just these are just numbers that took it from a million dollars and then they built on it and now it's five million dollars. That four million dollar increase in value of the property would have an abatement over X amount of years in taxes right. so that they could absorb some sort of a, you know, a benefit from being able to build a new property that's going to increase their tax base. They're going to benefit from it, but so is the town. Mm -hmm. That makes thanks for clarifying that for me because I wondered how that would work or what you know what you guys had, had planned. I appreciate it. Right. Interesting. So it's not adopted, but it, would we would we have any would there be any point to us trying to raise that again? I guess. I think it wouldn't. I, I don't see any harm in it. It's a new board of selectmen, and you're you know okay. a mostly new board of um, or new EDC. Okay. Um, and is the plan that uh, Cleo and Toby put together, is that 
um, a document like the PDF, uh, like what you sent on the signage, or is that something else? Is that a? a I have it's a Word doc. I have it somewhere. I can unearth it and share it. Oh, that'd be great. I'd love to read it. Then you know, because then it's something uh, you know physical to to do something with. Great. <clears throat> Should we scroll down a little bit here? Um, so I think I said you you already. It seems like the. The EDC does maintain regular contact with the business community, right? And we're just going to continue doing that, right? Yeah, so I send out um, e newsletters. And in the past, the EDC would do probably three happy hours a year. Hey, um, okay. And then the, the next one is seek out appropriately scaled businesses, housing, and community amenities on large opportunity <laughs> parcels. Can I say that one other thing? Huh? There's one other thing that EDC did, did with businesses that we sort of during COVID, we had a halt. We used to, when a new business came into town, we would invite them to our EDC meetings um, so they could present themselves. So, Robert, you know how you found EDC by watching the closed caption, you know, videos Absolutely. on TV? Sure. Well, we used to invite the new businesses to our meetings where they could come to us and present themselves and say, hey, we're the new business in town. This is what we do. And us as the EDC commission would talk to them, ask them questions that we thought were, you know, interesting to the town or people that live in the town and they could, you know, respond and it gave them a little bit of uh, exposure and they could meet us. And it, it, I thought it was nice. Um, you know, and we used to almost at every meeting before the pandemic, we had at least one or maybe two businesses that had come in into town in the last month or two, and they would sort of give a little blurb about themselves and in person, and it was nice. So, for instance, you have the the wine shop, and you have I I, I don't know, there's the new dance studio that's in you know behind. Uh, Katz's Plaza and all, yeah. all these different businesses, we used to give them the opportunity to come in and say, hey, this is who we are, this is what we do. And uh, it, it was a nice feel good thing, but it made that business feel welcome. Mm -hmm. And for those who watched it on TV, they got to know who that business was and it got put out in the minutes. So it was a nice thing. I mean, I would yeah, love I to do that once we get back together again. That sounds great. Let's, let's do that and let's keep that as part of our are maintaining regular contact with the community. Absolutely. <clears throat> in fact, after our happy hour on the way home, I stopped in the new wine store to check it out. And it's <laughs> quite nice. Um, they carry a lot of, uh, they carry some of my favorites that are not available at other larger places, not in Woodbridge, nearby though. Wow. Um, so I, I wound up getting some things that I can't get in the in the larger place down, down the road. Uh, so that was, that was neat. Uh, so that, yeah, this next bullet is seeking out appropriately scaled businesses, housing. Wow. So, um, do we ever attempt to reach out to property owners or, or developers, you know, and, and do we want, would you want that to be something that we do, uh, to actually try and say, Hey, what are you doing with this property? You know, or, um, or, you know, talking to somebody who develops to try and encourage them the Woodbridge is the place to be. And I know several of you are involved in the business of commercial real estate. So, you, you know, I'm asking you guys, is that something that is done or not really? Yeah, I mean, we did some, um, we did, uh, let's see, how many? Uh, Probably two person. or three meetings with commercial property owners. Um, yeah, we but we've never really reached out to we haven't really reached out to developers uh -huh. or particular but, specific businesses to try and bring them in. You know, but we did reach out to um, commercial property owners. We had a few different um, brainstorming groups where we brought them together so we could talk to them about one, you know, what do they think that the business district needs? Um, we bounced some ideas off of them and, you know, a couple of where we were trying to figure out this whole flower 
beautification thing and sort of got shot down. We thought we had a good thing going. And then you're like, what about snow and snow plows? And it, 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 so we saw the other side of things. So it was helpful in that regard. We don't want to spend a lot of money and then and not work. Right. Um, but we have a, we have a good, uh, Betsy definitely has a, a list of the commercial property owners. And I think that they, they have to be engaged. We need to know, we need to talk to them and find out, you know, we're talking about all these things. We're, we're not the owners of these properties and we need to know what they want to do. Do they think these are good ideas? So when we discuss stuff and we want to put it on paper, we want to, you know, we think it's a, a good idea. We, we need to bounce these ideas off of those folks so that we can say, all right, we, this is our idea. Will it work? And are you guys for it? And if they're for it, then we can try to push that forward. Mm -hmm. Do we do a reg? I mean, as you said, you guys know who the commercial property owners are just from, I guess, from what, like, just because you know who's on record as owner, right? Do we communicate with the, with owners that way? I mean, do we have, a, like, when you send out that seeing information, is it, do you have actually like a, a an ability to send out email when emails go out from the, EDC, there are they going to all commercial property owners? They're going to all businesses for whom I have an email. Okay. And how would you have gotten the email? They would have had to come to you though, for that, right? For the most part, yeah. So I know there's a lot of people I'm missing. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, are are there are there major sites that are undeveloped that we all would say, wow, that would be a perfect place for a significant anchor like business? to be in, in Woodbridge. And I haven't gone through CT vision appraisal, you know, lot by lot to look, but I wonder if any of you have, or. Yeah, I mean, we it. had, um, got, we had um, gotten, a, when we were doing the tax abatement work, we had gotten a list from the tax assessor uh -huh. of all the properties in the business district or next to the business district that were large and potentially developable developable um I, I think that we always find it's challenging because we're a commission and when we don't there's not a economic de development staff person yeah yeah in the town so that sort of role of actually talking to developers usually um ends up with the board of selectmen and or the first selectmen okay so it doesn't, I don't know. I just kind of find it's awkward. I don't know what's um, appropriate for us as a you know, commission. I, did, I did ask Beth Heller, would she object to us reaching out? And she said, no, she would not object. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> we could, we could try, <laughs> you know, see where it goes if anywhere. Right. I think, I think we know the major players that own um, the bigger properties. Um, I don't think we've ever engaged the folks that, and I don't even know who they are that own the, the lots of land along Litchfield. Um, I know who owns, you know, the, the landlocked land behind, you know, the, you know, the one Bradley business park and behind uh, the Linder building. You know, I know, I know who owns that land and there's other owners that own other undeveloped pieces. Um, I think those folks want to do stuff. Um, what holds them back? They, yeah. What's that? What holds them <laughs> back? Because it seems like crazy to have an investment. I think it's really, I think, it's, I, I don't know. I, I mean, you all can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's zoning. Um, and I also think it's, you know, community, um, I don't, uh, folks that don't want it to be developed, put it that way. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of pushback from just the the, the whole Woolbridge community for certain development, you know, ideas that have been put out there, and I'm not the one to say whether they're right or they're wrong. I, I you know, I, but there's I think there's a community engagement that needs to happen um, for those pieces of land to be developed in a way that's. Um, uh, so everyone wants it to be there. I don't. I don't know any other way to put it. 
Um, I think that that piece is missing. I see. Um, there's been there's been developers that wanted to put you know 55 and over. There's been folks that wanted to put a mixed use development. There've been folks that wanted to put a you know uh, affordable living with a you know apartments and other stuff. And I think that every time any of these ideas are put out there, there's a big backlash from the community, and I think that they have the right to, and, and, and they're probably right in pushing back, but I think that there needs to be that buffer that sort of gets out and engages everybody and says, here's why, and here's what's going to happen, and here's why it's going to benefit you, and I think that piece is sort of missing, um, and it seems to be like a revolving door hmm. for the last I, I, know, five, six years. I'm surprised because I would think that if, if I own a property in a, in a commercial district, I have the right to develop it with a commercial business, right? I, I don't even think I'd have to ask permission of anybody, right? I wouldn't, the community wouldn't really have even have a say in whether you can put a, a building, a retail building on a commercial plot, plot right? I think Jeremy's talking specifically about the parcel at the corner of Litchfield and Bradley. And I don't know the history of the zoning there. I think it's zoned residential, but in the past, the developer, I think, was looking for a special exemption. That's different. Or something and then, and along those lines. I see. And then that was where, okay. <clears throat> I see. Um, Some sort okay. of community engagement where people, I'm going to talks to everybody and says, why don't you want this here? And, and, and try to make some sort of meeting of the minds to, you know, try to make it happen. Um, otherwise we should farm it. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I'm bringing all this up because again, um, it's on the bottom of Betsy's screen is consult with the development community is one of the recommendations right for us. So that's why I'm I'm asking all this stuff. If we, is this something we, you know, do or not? And I think, I think, kind of going back a little bit to what Cleo said is on this particular one, consulting with the development community. I think it's a little awkward because it's not our land. Right. Yes. So the town right, doesn't right. own any land in, in sure. the business district, and so, I mean we could probably try to facilitate a conversation but it's and that's that's what it would be that would you're it's a little awkward. Would, it would just be an attempt to facilitate to say hey there's this lovely piece of land and you're you're a developer and why don't you guys talk you know that mm. kind of thing. again i know if this sounds naive tell me you know maybe it's just too high in the sky to uh, think you could push things along or it could it be rephrased as you getting the property owners engaged around developing what they no own. Problem. Yeah. Right. So, so that would mean reaching out to the property owners. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, Versus, personally, right. I wouldn't, it, uh, would, 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 um, reaching out to property owners that we identify as like areas that we really would hope something would happen with. Could we consider that as something we might do? And would anybody object to that as a thing to try? No. Okay. Great. What's uh, going down? Yeah, engaging with decision. <clears throat> so those were all on, those were all things the plan said was ongoing stuff we should be uh, looking at doing right and now they're the the goals switch to near-term action agenda um lead continuing business recruitment okay so in the same spirit trying to do what we can do to to lure businesses uh to woodbridge um and uh, establish context with home-based businesses, uh, advocate for transportation solutions, 
Um, you know, I did ask also about. Can we go they, back to home based? Best, sure. Betsy, have we ever reached out to home based businesses? Um, I don't know that they're there unless they tell me they're there, right? They don't have to go through zoning. They're not necessarily filing personal property tax. So it's kind of a big black hole to me, but I think it would be really useful. I just don't know how to find them. Right. Yeah, just if anybody has ideas on how to identify them, that'd be great to hear. I, I wouldn't know how to either. That'd be the, a really hard one. Um, when I uh, got to um, meet uh, with Beth Heller, I asked also about whether we've heard anything as a town about um, you know, Department of Transportation changes to the uh, exit 69 and all, you know, and, and basically the answer was no. We're really, it's not, it's been pretty silent, right? Would that fair, Betsy? That's what Beth said. Right. So they did the short term project, which took a lot of advocacy. Um, yeah. And they're, I haven't heard from them in quite a while. They have something posted, right? There's, um, is it just the old, is it just the short term project? I know on the Connecticut website, I have like the 20 year plan or something. Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at that in a while. Yeah. On the Department of Transportation, like the, the whatever it is, the DO, Connecticut the DOT website or something? Yeah, but it, this was a while ago I saw it. Oh, I'll have to look. I haven't, I didn't even look at that. Yeah. But yeah, that seemed, to be a repeated um, recommendation, I think in the in the Yale report too, to make sure you work. We're working with them. Yes, yeah, yeah. it, it was absolutely. So if anything happens, we'd certainly want to get be sure Woodbridge's gets to try and get a voice in, in what's going to happen. You know, the trouble is we won't know until <coughs> they come in and say, "Here, we're doing something." Sounds right. like well. They always come in with. Um, a plan and sometimes an alternative and they seek feedback and then they have a public information session. So we certainly have time to tweak and suggest things. Oh, great. So that that's, we don't have to worry about waking up one morning to um, construction no. without consultation. No, it would not be great. a surprise. They'd have a Good meeting and might be a year and a half before they actually show up with their machinery. Um, you know, next item in there is about sidewalks, which I don't, uh, of course, take cost a lot of money, as we know, um, and wayfinding and signage. And I, I've got to look at the, did everybody get a chance to look at the signage uh, plan that, that Betsy sent in the package? I did. Yeah. The song, I thought it looked great. I mean, it's exactly, you know, what I was hoping we would do uh, as a town. The, you know, consist all the different types of signage working together would be a fantastic uh, thing. And if, and if you had significant signage in the village area, I think it would go a long way to help uh, unify the business district. Uh, is that something we want to get behind for, to get to see we get it done? I mean, I, I personally would, but what do you guys think? I mean, we started looking into it. Um, I don't remember what the cost was just for one sign. Didn't we talk about this? Like six or $7,000 per sign. I got the cost down. It's approximately $3,500 um, for the sign with the um, plantings. When, and you know, I looked at the, the package had a quote, Betsy, for the entire project of $280,000. Was that? That's unrealistic. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I spoke with a local signage company who said that she could make something for us that would be long lasting, durable, look good, and significantly cheaper. Okay. Okay. So in regards to the signs, I mean, you know, the idea to fund that being that town doesn't necessarily have the funding unless we get some sort of a grant. An idea would be, and we've talked about it before, is to, you know, approach the businesses or the commercial property owners and say we're looking for sponsors for these signs you you drive in orange 
and you see this sign is sponsored by XYZ law firm or XYZ real estate company. Mm -hmm. And if we approached businesses and we started a campaign to maybe approach a world banker or real living work Castillo or Levin Miller Moretz or whatever big property owners or uh, companies are in town, we may be able to find the funding grassroots from our local businesses that want to pay for and will appreciate there's their names being on some of these signs that we post up in, in the, in the town. Um, and I think we could really wrap our hands around that and sort of try to move that forward. Do we, uh, it might be good to talk to orange and find out. Sort of how they approach it or. Yeah. So I think there's two different kinds of signs in orange. There are the signs on um, Route 1 that say, Welcome to Orange. And then there are the signs on the highway off ramps. Mm -hmm. And those are through a DOT program that um, have sponsorship. And I think that the other town signs in Orange do not have sponsors. Mm -hmm. But the DOT ones certainly do. And those are the ones that you see in off ramps all throughout the state. And but, but do you think there's any opportunity for grants for signs? I've been looking since 2017. Okay. <laughs> so it could happen, but it has not happened in seven years. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, and at this point, you don't think that uh, the town has the appetite to um, to to do the pro a broad signage project? No. no. Okay. Okay. I've put it in the capital budget request the last two or three years, and it gets taken out every year. Uh huh. Okay. Well, maybe if somehow there's a magically a huge influx of cash to the town from something that might. Uh, allow more money to be spent on the business district. It could. And and um, when we had that commercial property owner meeting that Jeremy referenced, um, we floated this idea and there was some interest from some of the people in the room. Oh, there was. To sponsor. So, to sponsor signing. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a an approach to take then, you know, to um, contact commercial property owners and say, here's what we're thinking of doing. Here's what it would cost. Here's what it would look like. Here's what your you know, your sponsorship would show something mm -hmm. along those lines. All right, well, let's, can, can we keep that on the short list of goals? Yeah. You yeah. know, the potential goals? Okay. Just, just thank you for a second. Has it been <laughs> done or is, is it worthwhile for our commission to meet with TPZ to like brainstorm? Is that even worthwhile? about uh signage about stuff like you know we're, we talk about a lot of things that require zoning yeah or you know or funding or a lot of different things and you know we're a commission and we don't really have any voting rights and we can't pass anything along we can make recommendations but tpc can do those things mm -hmm. um is it worthwhile for us to have like a brainstorming meeting if tpc's even willing, and, and I'll let, you know, that's you probably tell me no, but I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want us to, I feel like there's a lot of, we run in circles a lot, you know, and I don't want to keep running on the same treadmill. Um, I would love to, you know, know what we can do and can't do or what yeah. they'd be behind because at the end of the day, a lot of the things that we talk about has to be backed by TPZ, I think. Um, yeah, and that's what the plan, how conservation and development recommends that, that we have a planning subcommittee to work with planning and zoning. Okay. Yeah, and maybe if you had a short list of things that are zoning related. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. Is signage zoning related? So not the wayfinding signs, but the individual business signs are. Ah, you mean so even the sponsor, like if we had the sponsorship portion of it, that would be. Zoning. No, I'm sorry. So I mean, like 
a business that says pet oh, store yeah. here. That oh, sort yeah, of yeah, sign. Yeah. Okay. So our our notion, our idea of taking the the signage, the wayfinding signage that you shared in the in the power in the uh, uh, PowerPoint today, that would be exempt from zoning consideration. Right. Okay. So that we could go ahead with independent of me meeting with planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. But you know, Jerry makes a good point. If if we would to, if we find out what's acceptable to TPZ for the commercial area. We have more to talk about with if we try and contact property owners, right? To be able to say, here's what you might be able to get done on your property. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were kind of thinking, Jeremy, too? Yeah, I mean, this whole abatement idea and tax incentives and yeah. you know, signage, I think a lot of the, you know, being a commercial realtor, the, the way our town is, is set up, like, there's, there, if you think about it, if you think of us versus like a Westport where you walk down the sidewalk and you're walking by storefront, 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 you have to like drive by and see a lot that goes back perpendicular. And there's a bunch of stores that are like all the way back and you don't see them. So you need good signage on the road and yeah. our signage, you know, regulations are pretty, you know, limited. And you see all these little A-frame signs all over the place, which don't look pretty. I mean, I yeah. don't blame the business owners for putting them out there. They need to. They need to get people to get drawn to their businesses. But there's not a lot of great signage to bring people back to these stores or whatever it may be. And in regards to just developing the properties, um, there's just not, you know, there's not a, there's nothing, there's no incentive for anyone to really make the property better, make maybe a sidewalk a little bit better or there's a lot of things that we could talk about that, you know, may make a property owner say, hey, if you're going to give me, you know, a couple bucks off my taxes, if I make my property look that much better, or if I build up my signage, or, you know, I can make a bigger sign for my tenants along the road, you know, I think that's a worth a worthwhile discussion to have. And I think it makes everybody happy without really disrupting much um so you know i think we need to sort of put our heads together the two commissions and and talk a little bit and say all right what are you guys willing to to maybe approve and and what would you want from us to get from business owners to see you know what they have in mind and then we can present it to you mm -hmm. to you know so you can give us your feedback i think that's a great idea um, do you think that, um, it might be as simple as, you know, we can go to any of us could go to a TPZ meeting, right. And get ourselves on the agenda to, to talk. Is that, is that what you're thinking or. Almost like having a joint meeting, like, I'm, I, and I don't know how that works. And I, I don't think it's been done in a long time, but I, I Betsy would probably know better on how to sure. make that work. Um, well, I think you need to have a, a list of what you want items to yeah. that you want to talk about with them first yeah. and maybe even specific recommendations. I don't know that you need to have the language, for example, of how you would want to change this, the signage regulations, but I think you would need specific complaints or kind of like, you know, case studies of um, how onerous the current regulation is so that they can then understand the problem and figure out how to resolve it. Okay. But you're saying to have a specific uh, initiative, right? That we would- I think it would be more productive. Yeah. Sure. So almost really kind of looking at the EDC as sort of a conduit between the developers and TPZ. Yeah, like a facilitator. Right. Right to an advocate encouraging yeah. and facilitating yeah. something yeah. to get something to happen. Exactly. Yeah, or even um um sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Don't worry. 
property owners themselves. You know, it's, you know, you drive down Amity Road and Selden Plaza's got, you know, how many stores in there? And you don't know they're there. I mean, people know they're there because we're a small town and word of mouth and all that stuff, but how do you know they're there? Yeah. I mean, without taking that right hand turn and looking in, oh, there's a bowling alley, there's a restaurant, there's a chocolate store, there's a yeah. deli, there's a, you know, there's all these different things in there and you wouldn't know that they're there unless you know ahead of time. Um, the signage is poor. Um, and if you go up Litchfield Turnpike and you go, do you get off the, you get off the highway, you see a sign off the highway, you know, Starbucks is there, but you don't know that, you know, Katz's is there and Grimaldi's was there and, you know, the smoothie shops there. And then you go behind there, there's another seven stores and who knows what's back there. I, don't, I, I, I challenge you all to tell me what's back there. You know, your property that's behind the Starbucks property. Right. Nobody knows. I mean, the clay date was back there mm -hmm. and they moved to New Haven to go to the, you know, to go to the, you know, to go to the Amity Plaza where Stop and Shop is because they needed more, they needed more visibility. They had enough space back there. They just right. didn't have enough signage and enough, you know, know-how for people to get to them. Well, it's signage and then an anchor, right? That's going to drive traffic in there. And yeah. you, you think about Selden Plaza, right? Like, the anchor is the social, right? Like that's the thing that's probably going to drive most people back there. And when you think about what we've gone through with COVID, right? I mean, that had to put a serious dent in a lot of those businesses. Deli Delish is already out, which I thought they made great food and, you know, they're not there anymore. And you have the, the print shop that was back there and they're out already. And I just don't, you know, it's, it's hard for people to know it's back in our little sort of nooks and crannies in our town. And I think it would be nice to be able to discuss some of that stuff with the folks that may be able to help us, you know, create greater wayfinding, basically. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, Betsy, the American Recovery Plan funding that the Board of Selectmen are still deciding on how to spend that money, right? Yes. Yes. So isn't the loss of businesses during COVID to our, all our small businesses, um, something that the town has suffered because of COVID and so can't we ask them to designate some of that funding to help the business district, like something like wayfinding with the American recovery plan funding? So, I think wayfinding would be a stretch, um, but one thing that we've talked about is a marketing program. So how do you market all of the business, you know, Woodbridge as a shopping, dining activity destination? Um, that's, but like physical things like sidewalks or signs, I think that would be a stretch. Okay, well, then we should add that to our goal, maybe, to decide if we want to push for some marketing money because of COVID. Yeah, I'm making a list in, uh, of everything we're talking about, you know, the, to try and come back and say, okay, here, here's now a, you know, list of things we've talked about that potentially to turn into projects or action plans. Mm -hmm. so. You know, we, we think about, I don't know if this fits under a goal, uh, but we know it was interesting where we had the, you know, the happy hour the other night, right, with NEPCO leaving yeah, you know, and the timing on that. Uh, where do we fit in, in, in terms of backfilling that, right? Or how, how do we replay? I mean, that's tax revenue we're going to lose. Right, probably significant. So, as we think about our goals, like what is our <laughs> role in in backfilling that? Are you trying to help find another business that wants that space? Basically, is that what you're right? Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that would be the reaching out, um, you know. I think it'd be, it probably is even harder to reach out to a potential business than it is to reach out to a property owner to try and help them, you know, navigate getting a development on their property. That would probably be the toughest thing is to actually go out and try and say to an outside business, hey, why aren't you moving to Woodbridge? This is this great space? Mm -hmm. Does that ever happen, Jeremy? I mean, going into the, like, Of, people, of, of you know like commissions in town towns reaching out to businesses to say come come to your our town i think it does um i definitely think it does i just don't i mean you got to think about what they're doing in oxford and other places i think it happens there i think it's definitely happened there um but i don't think it's happening here because i'm not sure what we're offering yeah and yeah. you know what what, 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 are, what are you, we know, offering? you know a, a landlord hires a realtor and says you know market my property and yeah. find me a tenant right um, and these other towns are saying we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna zone this piece of rock that we're gonna dig out and let you develop into uh you know a shopping mall yeah and you know we're gonna be behind you in you know attracting new business right. we're not we're, we're not i don't think we're there um so i mean as far as realtors yeah landlords hire a realtor and the, the realtor's job is to put up signs and market it and blast that on social media and all that kind of thing but i don't think the town's job is to say Okay. Hey, we just had a deli that moved out of a space. Um, we think it'd be great for your deli to come here. Okay. Uh, yeah. That said, that survey data that we got shows what type of business residents would like. Um, and certainly putting another brewery in where NEPCO is would be a great replacement. Um, but it is true that you could spend, you know, hours and hours wooing a certain business. And in the end, they decide not to move, not to expand or to go elsewhere. Um, so it, it is, it's, I think that's one of the more difficult things about this is sometimes these things are out of your hands. I mean, NEPCO is looking at four different sites simultaneously. Yeah. Great. At least four. Yeah. Duffin, I mean, you know, if a town's gonna, you know, I think that the town's role is to create some sort of an incentive for, you know, the realtor can market and do all that stuff the town can do the nitty gritty in terms of zoning and all that thing and all that stuff and tax incentives and lay the, you know, the framework for it to be a good idea for your yeah. business to relocate here. And then it's yeah. the marketers or maybe it's EDC or the realtors to find those folks because you're saying, Hey, guess what? If you come here and you, you know, you put XYZ into this property, you're gonna get, you know, you can get in here and you're not gonna pay taxes for a couple of years and you can get your business going and, you know, you're, you're gonna save some money in doing so and we're gonna help you market and all that kind of thing. So it's like a, it's a, it's definitely, there's a lot of pieces to it. Mm -hmm. um, well, what I'm hearing is that we really, and it already was on the list, but we really should revisit that tax abatement plan and maybe one of our, goal or jobs is to actually get it adopted you know you know so that then you have something to say if you talk to a, a, a owner or developer it's a great goal yeah okay right i don't know if we have much more on this list or does this go on for a while uh, let's see let's Okay, sort of general statements on 
does seem pretty general. Yeah. Um, what about the idea of a of a special services district or BID? You know, is that something that you think that the business area would ever want to do? I mean, I've read on Connecticut's website that they have to actually vote to do it to create something like that. Yeah, because I they think have to contribute. Right. It's, a new, it's another tax assessment for them. It is. Exactly. And, and I don't think they're at that point yet. I, I think they would need to feel much more. Uh, that there's more to offer. Like, yes, you know, if we had sidewalks and if we had a common, I don't know, if we had an appropriate street that we could call a main street, yeah. close off and have a block party every okay. so often, you know, if we had a pavilion in the business district where we could sponsor events, but we don't have any, <laughs> anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. I thought that might be just too far. You know, I mean, it, yeah. maybe if we get some, um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a long term. Right. I, I hear you. I, yeah, I, I thought, yeah. Previous when, when Jody was the EDC chair, they talked about a TIF program, which is like a tax incremental financing plan. Where if you know you you improved your property by X Y Z amount, the taxes went from you know fifty thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars. A piece of that tax increment would go towards development of it would go towards a fund that would help develop the business district. It's a long shot, and it, it's you know it's high in the sky sort of stuff, but. It's a way to sort of start creating a pot of money that can be used for a specific area in town. Um, I've heard it a lot over a lot of EDC meetings over the over the last couple of years, and in bigger towns that have bigger, more developed, you know, business districts, they do that often. Um, and you can look it up. It's TIF. It's TIF. You, I mean, I'll check that out. It. So that's how they pay for some improvements in the area without even doing a special. A special right. services district. Correct. I so you're saying, you know, you're saying like, you know, if, if, you know, whoever may, if someone puts another floor on their building. Yeah. And now that building goes from, you know, being a $500,000 building to a million dollar building, the taxes on that. Increment. Increment, you know, 5% of the, of the tax increment would get put into a pot that yeah. could go to be to develop. Uh, very interesting, actually. Yeah. So, and, uh, Betsy, is there anything? There's nothing more on grant. Is there anything on more on grant hunting that we could do? And and by we, I don't mean just you. I mean, could I would volunteer to write things if you said there's something to do. Do you, do you think there's any way to identify anything else we should do that might get us money for the business area? I have not seen anything in quite a while. Um, and would it come across your, your way just from what you look at generally? Like, Yes, most grants targeted towards municipalities would come to me through the state or the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. So um, we know we're not missing something. It's just a matter of it's just not out there right now. Right, I mean, there are always other grants that municipalities can apply for they're not targeted to them so that's something that might not come across my desk um i do have access to a grants database that i check every once in a while specifically looking for wayfinding and sidewalks and bike safety and i i just haven't seen anything in quite a while okay and are you you have the capacity to do that occasionally or do you need help doing that like again like that's it kind of depends on what it is okay okay well, I would say if you, you know, if you found that you were not able to capacity wise, um, I would certainly volunteer and maybe others would if you told us what to do. You know okay. what I mean? So keep that in mind. You know? Thank you. Sure. 
So this next one is interesting in light of the conversation at the happy hour. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that is. And see, and that's certainly something like what Jeremy was saying, we need to be, TPZ would need to say, yes, we're willing, you can do live workspaces. You know, that would be the kind of information you could bring back to a property owner and say, you know, you can create a live workspace and, on your property now, um, or you, there'd be willingness to, to allow it. Uh, so maybe what we need to do is understand better what's allowed in all the different business zones. You know what I mean? At this point, or do you guys already know all that? Like what's allowed in the various uh, business, there are like five or six different classifications of, of business zone in Woodbridge. I think that would be great learning. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, some sort of a, you know, even a invite someone from TPZ to one of our meetings in order to get like a, just a primer on. To walk, to educate us yeah. on what's yeah, about. Absolutely. Yeah. Betsy, do you know, is that something you think we should, does that make sense to you or does that? I can certainly ask. I mean, there might even be like a, a simplified there. document that we could get. I mean, I certainly, I know in my searches online, I have a snapshot from one of the, actually from one of these two plans, which shows a map of the business area with color coded with the like six different categories of business, you know, um, uh, but I don't know what they mean or what's really allowed on it. And that's that's exactly I think would be interesting to know. Mm -hmm. And we talked a lot yesterday about co working at, at, at mm -hmm. the hour. And I and I know oh, yeah, I'm curious about still, that since you know, like I there are there and I'm not gonna go into addresses or anything like that, but there are businesses that have vacancies or buildings that have vacancies. The landlords are just like, no, I don't want the kind of traffic or I don't want that many, you know, people in there. I don't want to split up my spaces like that. It's going to cost me too much money. I don't know the answer, but it would yeah, be. But who was, who was suggesting co-working? People that want co-working spaces? So, so, well, I could, I could go into names for this. So John Svensson, who owns the building across the street from him and he meet the insurance agency next to the, um, the, you know, the, the garage with the big bays that just got leased out to an auto parts store that an auto a mechanic that we wanted, maybe to be a, a restaurant or some sort of a cool something or other, but now it's going to be a, you know, a mechanic shop. Right. He said that he's got some small offices in his building and that he decided to put them out there for rent. And he got like 20 phone calls within you know a week or two about people that wanted to lease small space they want to get out of their house they want to get in there he said some of them you know weren't the right fit but there's a lot of people out there that are looking to get <laughs> out of their houses finally may still work for a big corporation but they're working remotely but they just don't want to be in their home mm -hmm. and you know maybe their company's willing to pay the 500 or 600 bucks for them to have their own office that's remote but not at their house yeah and i just i find that interesting because having like having run a co-working space in science park i we got a lot of inquiries but not a lot of people who are willing to pay um I, what they need to pay for a small private office within a co-working space and i think uh, just, that I'm when i saw like with the grove um they went out of business but basically all their office, there was a high demand for private office space within the Grove, but then eventually yep. when the district opened, the Grove failed. Um, well, Grove failed, they sold, the, the Grove sold the owner of the Grove. We managed that whole build, that whole property. And I don't know, I don't need to go in the whole story, but you know, Matt Harris was at the, at the um, meeting last night and he came from the Grove and we moved him up to Woodbridge and he's now at 245 Amity Road. And he started small at the Grove and there's the, he said there's demand for small office space. He's got other colleagues that are, you know, in the, you know, 
techie sort of spaces industry and they're looking for smaller space and and the same thing happened with with you know with what john said and I, you know an incubator kind of office building would be something that i think someone if they had the wherewithal or the money to put into dividing little offices up and I, I think there's a there's a want for it you know I, the pandemic sort of changed a lot of people's minds about a lot of stuff yeah. but i don't you know is it sustainable i don't know you know over the long term but right now it seems like there's a lot of people that you know we manage a big building downtown in east rock and i have no small space at all left but i get calls every single day from artists or you right. know, small lawyers or they need space. They want space. They want an art studio. They want this, that, and the other thing. And I don't have it. Yeah. I the wish artists... I could tell them where they could go or if I could put them somewhere, but I don't know where to put them. There's nowhere to go. Well, the, the artists definitely want it, and they usually can't afford it. But that's an, also another idea if we if we could link up some of these landlords with um, an arts funding organization to make the space available for studios. That that could be an opportunity too. Yeah, it sounds like there's lots of there's lots of work we might be able to try doing in facilitating connections, right? Yeah. Is there anything else on this, Betsy, or is that sort of the end of this thing? This is the last page of that section. Okay, great. Yeah. <coughs> Um, I have a question, and I guess, well, Betsy, do you know the answer? Was from this Yale study? Yeah. yeah. And was was the Woodbridge Village name ever adopted by the town? Not that I know of. I, I don't think there was ever any formal vote or discussion about that. Okay. But I did see it in the um, uh, in the signage present a uh, package that Betsy shared with us. There's Woodbridge Village signage for the business area. So clearly, well, but that thing, yeah, that wording was a placeholder because even at that point, it was a question: is is that what we call it? <laughs> okay, okay. So certainly, before we put up signs, we need to know for sure that that's what we're calling the business area, right? Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that, you know, you had talked a while ago about what is this area, where is it, and, you know, what yeah. do we call it? Kind of just defining the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and that's certainly something you'd want the Board of Selectmen to up agree on, that yes, you, you're calling it Woodbridge Village or not, or you're calling it something else before and what it and what it is like where it belongs. Um, <clears throat> there are a conflicting maps, um, even in the Yale plan. It, it talks about there. There are multiple ways of defining what's the business area. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, there's smaller one, a lar and then a larger area that's still all business that, um, but is further away from the core, of, like Selton Street. I just think it's um, a, a bad marketing idea to call something the village of Woodbridge. Like that's not going to work. <laughs> so you you would vote no on Woodbridge Village? No, no, a, I'm oh. voting no on the village of Woodbridge. Oh, 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 oh. that's how they. That's how. Um, Yale was called. Well. You, on your second page on the Yale summary, you refer to page five plan indicates the Woodbridge business district to be known as quote, the village of Woodbridge. And oh, yes, yes, yes. They did. You're right. They did call it that. Yeah. And I wonder, I had the same question actually, yeah. who came up with that? Is that official? You know? Yeah. And we want to define what we want to call something obviously before we start doing anything. With right. It. And that's going to come from the town. And like I said, I just think from a marketing perspective, you know, you it's wouldn't... not a good, uh, it's not a good name. Yeah. <laughs> and on, the, on, the, on the flip side of this whole thing, and we keep talking about, you know, the, the business district, we've talked about 
the other, the whole complete other side of this whole thing is, why can't we change zoning around town hall? Why can't we put a store up by town hall or a coffee shop around town hall or a restaurant or a anything like that? Why can't we flip zoning up in that area where it will allow some business to be in the middle of the town mm-hmm. instead of you know down in the business district? There's a lot of things to think about, I think, as EDC. Like, it doesn't have to all be focused down there. I mean, why not? Why can't the old, and I know there's a lot of reasons why, but why couldn't the old firehouse be some sort of a place where someone's doing business? Or, you know, there's a lot of parts to this town that may be a little bit more conducive to having a walkable little sure sort of feel. Um, and to only focus on just down in the business district, I think we're, you know, sort of a little short-sighted just because there's other options. You know, that if you go sit, there's a lot of land. I saw the 2030 commission the other day and that they call it the, the Grove, right, Betsy? Yes. Between the firehouse, the old firehouse and the library area, there's like a good acre plus in there. That's just land. <coughs> Why can't there be something there? Why can't there be a, a you know, couple storefronts and offices up top or something along those lines? So I think there's a lot of big picture stuff that you know we could think about that could you know we should think about. Okay. Um, it's in the middle of everything. Yeah, I, I mean, of course, the area is. I mean, the first time when we moved here. I looked at the old firehouse and thought, oh, my God, what a perfect coffee house or, you know, restaurant that would be, you know. Um, actually, I thought that that was proposed and it was businesses in the commercial district that protested the idea to be, to the Board of Selectmen about doing that. They didn't want that, you know, as a competition, I guess. Hmm. Betsy, do you know anything about that? Is that... That predates me, but um, at the time, I want to say it was like 2009 or 2010, maybe. Yeah. There was conversations about putting a coffee shop there, and um, several businesses came to speak out against that. Those businesses are no longer in business, right. um, but they did not like the idea of competition. Right, and that's what I remember, too, from articles about it or something at the time. That that was the, and that was enough to kill it, I guess, uh, in the, you know, at a town level. Just food for thought, you know, as we yeah. sort of, yeah. you know, think about yeah, this I mean, when I, forward. When I was reviewing the, the survey results, right, I almost envisioned the people responding to that survey may have actually been envisioning what you just described right like we'd love to have sidewalks and you, know, you see some of the verbatims you know where you can run into people it almost in my mind felt like they're sort of envisioning something in the center of town versus the the business district as it exists today it was just walking you're walking on the fields you know where the dog park is and you grab a coffee across the street and yeah you, you i know, think there's okay. a desire for you know places that you can walk to that are, you know, closer to the center. Yeah. And yeah, it goes. Like you, could, you can have place making because even if there was walking paths, bike paths or sidewalks down in that whole South Bradley area neighborhoods, you know, that would make a huge impact and might even spur development. Sure. You know, right now you have to walk on the roads. It's um, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, um, you know, there's the ball field down there. One, there's a lot of sports stuff down there, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it would be great if there was a, um, a walking path that went through the whole neighborhood. I think if you, if you live in the flats, that's probably really attractive, right? I think if you're more towards the center of town, it's still going to be a drive. I mean, it's not really. I don't walking. know. I mean, 
if you have little league, if I go to the dentist down there, we go to yeah, the, yeah. my daughter works at the sports center. Other people play tennis. Um, there's the dance studio and the aerial art studio. Like if, like think about all the parents that sit there and drop off their kids at all these activities. If they had some place to go walk around and if some a few stores popped up, I mean that that would be great if you could even, you know, take an even longer walk up you know, Bradley Road to the other stores. I don't know. Yeah. I think that yeah, I mean, think about like four research drive, the old bear building, which has been pretty vacant. Other than the JCC moving in there when they had their fire on the ground floor. They have a couple, you know, biotech kind of companies up, upstairs, but that's a big building. And unfortunately, yeah. it's got all this crazy infrastructure in it for chemistry labs and bio biochemistry kind of stuff. And the infrastructure costs a lot of money. But you take a building like that and turn it into a co-working space with mm. sidewalks and, you know, across the street is three research park and that building's for sale right now. It's got tenants in it and they have long leases, but that building's for sale. I mean, you could imagine what could happen if, you know, a couple of buildings were bought down there and mm -hmm. you just change the, you change the uses of those buildings. You know, it could be a, a restaurant or a store or, you know, a different kind of an office park and, there's just ways to do stuff. It's just got to, it's a long-term plan. And, you know, it's about trying to bring in the right people that could see the vision of changing it all. Um, there's, there's a lot of opportunities. It's just a matter of trying to get someone to see it like we're seeing it, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, then that, and we've, we've definitely got that on the list of being facilitators, right? As Part, uh, to to make things happen, see if that's something we can do. Yeah. Would um, what would you all think of uh, not going into the Yale plan tonight because it's already eight thirty and I don't want to torture anybody. Um, and making that a part two next month would that uh, be good for you guys? That works. Okay. Um, uh, and I'll write uh, some notes and maybe send them to Betsy. You know what I took out of this, so that we can um, build on that next time. From uh, I'm glad to do that. Great. Um, next item on the agenda was uh, in-person meetings. Does anybody have uh, strong feelings either way about doing in-person versus or continuing this, the WebEx calls? Or kind of everybody okay with it either way? Oh, I can't hear you. Clint. Prefer WebEx, but it's just a personal preference. With either, it was nice seeing. To Jeremy, are you and either? Can I hear either out of that? Yeah, I'm. I'm fine either way. I mean, it's nice to have these, you know, get-togethers, and I have. I personally have so many meetings in the evening that it's more. It's easier for me to jump on my computer or my phone to build it. I understand. Have a yeah. meeting, but I like meeting in person. It's it also, so I, I you well, know, find a lot of wait, waiting. And the, do you want to wait for better day. weather to do that, like springtime or something? <laughs> Maybe get through the winter on WebEx and, and then decide? S Scott, do you have a preference? Uh, I, I, I'm open to either. Yeah. I'm open to either. Yeah, it was great. Like I said, you know, earlier, it was great meeting everyone. I, I thought the same thing, but, you know, Jeremy makes a good point. It's awfully convenient to be able to hop in here and like two minutes after this meeting, I'm going to be having like my decaf coffee and, you know, downstairs. So, right. There's a plus of that too. Yeah. Um, for now, I propose that we continue with the WebEx and, and we'll just revisit this in a couple months and see if everybody feels any different. Is that good? Yeah. Let's see. What are the other commissions doing? I'm sorry. What are the other what are the other groups doing commissions? Um, some of them feel very strongly that they want to be in person, and there are other commissions where people are still not like ready to be in person. And then there are others still like you all who have busy evening lives who think, you know, I wouldn't mind being in person, but it's a heck of a lot easier to to yeah. do it at home. So it really seems to be personal preference. But to be honest, today is the first day. Um, I haven't even told anybody yet. 
um, that this is the first day that we have hit the threshold Beth set to be able to meet to decide to meet in person or not. Well, maybe, you know, the same way uh, my office and company now we're moving to a permanent hybrid situation you know where we're home two or three days and at work two or three days yeah but, uh, but by connecticut law we're allowed until april 22 to meet remotely i believe Correct. Um, and then no, it's maybe it's it. until then <laughs> Look, do you mean that we would we literally wouldn't be allowed to continue using the remote meeting after that unless they change the law correct oh, oh so it's not an option like the way it is it at our you know, my company, it, we're, we're just deciding what to do. It, it's actually not going to be an option unless something changes after April. Your right, specifically is. due to the pandemic. Okay, okay. So. I think that um, to go back to the goals, we should add to our goals to to um, talk to more people and friends to and whom, whomever to come to meetings to offer their public comments. Oh, uh, at our right. meetings? Yeah. Or, or, because we never right. have public comments, but you know, people um, on Facebook always have a lot to say about economic development. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll tell you something I was thinking of doing, um, which is going to sound, well, maybe it won't sound crazy, but you know how Betsy said with businesses that um, she has no way of communicating with them unless she has an email address. I was thinking of going out on a Saturday with a clipboard and just walking around and getting email addresses for businesses. And Betsy, if I did that, then would you be able to kind of add them to a mailing list of e when so whenever EDC is doing something? I Yes, I do have a mailing list, but I think the real problem is is the businesses that aren't visible. You know, the, the small offices, say, huh. on the second floor of sure. you know, Hazel Terrace or... I see what you mean. But like, so all the visible ones, like, the the restaurants are already they're all on your list um for the most but, part you yeah. know okay so then that wouldn't be a good use of time okay never mind <laughs> i won't do that then. uh okay so let's keep the meetings virtual for now and revisit it in a, a you know a couple of months and see if we want to change it sure. great um and then i have a uh request um I'm going to be away the second Thursday of December. Um, is it possible to meet for December the first week, first Thursday for you guys? That's fine by me. It just, I think, becomes a special meeting. That's it does. Yeah. That's right. the beauty of that, yes. So, which only means we can't change the agenda. Right. Would you be okay with that, Cleo, though? What, what were you suggesting to which date? The first Thursday rather than the second Thursday. December 2. It should be fine. Oh, great. Jeremy, is that okay with you? I don't. If you take up Thursday, hold on, December 2nd, then I won't have another meeting that day right now. I don't have anything that night. So that's okay. Yeah. That's good for you? Yeah, it should be fine. Oh, great. So, Betsy, can we do that then? And then yeah. we'll just continue with goal discussion next time for sure. That'll be, you know, main thing we'll talk about, I guess. Oh, and we should definitely talk about this focus group thing. I think it's it'd be worthwhile to get um, the people that we we're with at the happy hour together at some point and just let them talk to us um, about what their thoughts and ideas are and us take some notes almost do like a uh, you know a focus session where they just you know I, we we talk big picture and we know all the we think about everybody coming into town but to get their perspective of being actually running businesses is I think worthwhile for us to take into consideration so like do you think me kind of like sending an, an email out to everybody and inviting them to a session and um hosting it you know in a town room or something town and maybe even a zoom is fine it doesn't matter we don't have to be together necessarily we can just do okay. a right you know just a special meeting where we can just say it's a uh you know a business owner edc focus group 
Okay. And, uh, you know, we can just ask some questions, put some questions out there ahead of time and get so, their feedback. So how about discuss it? So let's put that on the agenda for next time. Maybe come up with the questions that we want to ask and, and plan out and that, that timing. Great. Betsy, does that sound good? We'll have those as our agenda items yeah. for next week. Okay. The other thing you'll need to discuss next month is the um, budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay. So I can put together a draft. Okay, fantastic. Great. All right, then should I motion to and close the meeting? So moved. Yeah. So moved. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you all. Thanks very much. It was great. Good, really good to the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Robert. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.